we're going to be seeing you here in the new season of Animal Kingdom. Was Augie an audition for you or something that just happened across your path? You know, it, it was uh, it was an audition um, that it was funny because it came in pretty it pre came in pretty quickly, and it was one of those ones that um, sometimes you have these auditions and, and it feels like it's oil and water. It's tough to kind of get into. It takes a lot of work to kind of make flesh out. <laughs> believe it, yeah. Uh, and this was one of those ones that I've from the second I saw it, I was like, oh man. It's perfect because I, you know, I love to uh, skate. I live on the beach. I, I kind of live a, a lot of that lifestyle anyways, minus the crime. And <laughs> but um, so it just fit. Um, I think in my slate for that one, I actually ended up doing my slate on a skateboard, skating down the um, boardwalk. <laughs> and while I was skating, I was like, what's up, Hans? <laughs> Sometimes those are the best way. I mean, if this is the character you're going to be portraying, hey. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? So there wasn't anything that you had to do to prep to portray him then? No, you know, I, I felt, <clears throat> I felt kind of, there was some time in between the audition and when we actually shot and when we did it. Um, actually, quite a bit of time. I, I booked something else and there was... Um, it was Walking Dead, actually, and, and Walking Dead kind of, it looked like I wasn't going to be able to do both of them. Um, so, but thank God we were able to work it out. But there was a time where it was like, is this happening or not happening? Because there was some months there, I think three or four months where it was like, yeah, you're the one, they want you. And then, wait, are we still going with this? What's happening? So, and that was also at the time where it's like, you have COVID, you have all these things going on. Right. So you just, you know. With a lot of things there's so many things that could go one direction and then they end up switching and going another direction and you just you just got to put your best work in and you know move on to the next thing so how was augie then originally described to you uh you know he was a guy who's kind of down on his luck um down on his luck kind of out of it and kind of living that nomad lifestyle but he used to be a professional in his trade. I can't really tell you what it was because I think it would give away something, but um, yeah, and he's kind of fallen off a little bit and is looking for somebody to kind of help him out. Um, maybe, like, I, th I feel like with Augie, he could go, he could go two directions, right? There's reasons that led him to where he is now <clears throat> that he's trying to kind of get away from, but there's also the side to him where like all of us, he wants to do his best, you know, he wants to be his best. So there's, there's, um, yeah, I'd say Augie was looking for some help at the time. Are you allowed to say how he finds his way to the Cody's or uh, do we have to just wait and see? Yeah, you're gonna have to wait and see. You're gonna have to wait and see. <laughs> Were you familiar with any of your Animal Kingdom co-stars before working with them here? I was actually, I, um, I had worked with Finn Cole a little bit on uh, Margot Robbie's Dreamland. Um, so I got to meet him there. He actually played my son in that, which was uh, <laughs> really, I mean, I, I was his father when I was younger and then, and then like 15 years later, he ends up going to- Okay, I was going to say that's a little too close. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But it was, uh, it was funny because I saw him on set and he looked at me, he gave me a double take. He's like, wait, what? <laughs> Hello, son. Yeah, right. <laughs> So with, uh, that was cool. It's, I'm starting to get to a place now where I'm seeing some of the same people and uh, starting to see how kind of a small, small of a world it is, you know, once you're in this long enough, I think. Animal Kingdom is such an intense series, whether it's from the stunt work that's involved, whether it's the drama that is involved in each episode. How did you shake off a long day of filming? You know, it's, uh, I think, I think we are capable of so much more than we know. Mm -hmm. And I've always found that when I'm pushed up against kind of obstacles, things that I would think I'd never be able to do, but you just, you don't have any other option but to do it. I tend to kind of rise to meet that thing. Um, so 
I don't know if maybe it's just because I've, I've faced so much kind of rejection, but stuck with this so long. There's, there's kind of a part of me that looks forward to taking that stuff on and has fun in that kind of thing. And I, and, you know, I was just on set yesterday and you, you, you get used to these insane hours and these insane demands on your body and your mind and your, but it's part of the fun too. It's, it's like when you finish it, it's like you just went on this insane journey, you know, and you can't believe you did it. And, and at first you're like, I don't know if I can ever do that again. And then two, three months later, you're like, all I want to do is that again. So it's, um, it's interesting, but, but I, I actually came away from uh, Animal Kingdom being like, I'm, I'm in pretty good shape. I go to the gym, I, you know, I, I work out a lot, but I came away from that being like, all right, there's some things that I need to prepare here um, that I don't. Cause you're doing a lot of, you don't really, you don't really have an understanding of what you're gonna be doing, but even something as small as like slamming a door and running across the room if you do it 15 times, can be, you know, can be crazy. And if you're supposed to be sprinting, you're doing all these things. For me, I want to make it as real as possible, you know. Um, but there was a there was a time in there where I, you know, I had a stunt guy, but I ended up trying to do it. I was like, you know, what? I think I think I could do this. I think I could get get this done. Which is a mistake. I should not have done this because stunt people are professionals and they do this for a reason. They are able to make it look very real, without putting themselves in jeopardy. Um, and, you know, I played sports all my life and I'm like, yeah, no, I can totally do this. And so I did it and it was great. Like everything would work great. And they're like, oh, that was awesome. Okay, let's do it again and again and again. And so we do it like 15 times and before I know it, I'm, I'm all skinned up and bruised up. And I'm just like, well, maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I should have let the stunt guy take this one. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. But it's, it's a lot of fun. So. <laughs> now we have a, uh, you have us on the edge of our seat as to what's to come, but it's also a good segue to my next question, which is, uh, we see you starting here in episode three, I believe it is, but were there a particular favorite episode? If you can't talk about memorable moments or favorite moments from filming, could you talk about maybe favorite episodes or at least an episode that viewers should look out for? Ah, uh, hmm. you know, I, we shot, we shot these in kind of a reverse order. They were all over the place. So I don't actually even know what episode it was exactly because they were all, sometimes I think there was one day we worked with three directors in one day, three different episodes in one day. Um, but I'd have to say that the last day of shooting I had there was pretty special. I felt that was also the day that that was all the stunts and you know um but it that felt pretty special i think it's because i'd started to get you know start to form some bonds and some friendships and get to know people and get to know the, the crew and and um especially being on something like this that has been around for so long and has had such success it just i can't help but feel kind of the specialness of of it so that last day was pretty special for me and uh being able to kind of just work with some of those guys is freaking awesome. Man. You're a part of social media. Are you looking forward to that instant fan feedback people are going to have when the episodes start airing here next week? You know, I, I'm so bad with it. I, I am on social media. I, I know it's something that I, I should continue to stay up on. Uh, especially I've got, I've got to, you know, think, like on woods i've got a lot of stuff coming out this summer which is great um but it, it, it's like it, it makes me sweat it makes me like just thinking about having to post stuff about myself and um i don't know it's 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 great it's awesome i kind of just cheat and and use what the other guys are doing and then like just post that stuff um but it's exciting it's it's really cool you know my first taste of it was with walking dead to see the fans reaction and and have people reaching out to me like what's gonna happen what's going on with this i have this theory do you is this true you know um so it's a part of it is a lot of fun and i feel like as i get in more into that i think i think i'll be able to embrace it a little more um but there's there's definitely this element of me of like 
pushing away from social media. I have this, I have this kind of like dream of like wanting to hide in the shadows so nobody really knows who I am, you know, so then I can play all these crazy parts and <laughs> I don't think you can do that though if uh you are quite the dramatic actor though because you do a lot of dramatic roles is that something that is a genre that really draws you to it or is it just something that you tend to find finds its way to you you know what it's um i think it's kind of emerging of of some things that have happened um i've always i've always kind of drawn been drawn towards drama I've been drawn towards pretty intense scenarios and things um and i have i have kind of i think i understand why now before i don't think i i really knew but i think there's a part of me that some actors get into it because they they love the show they love to be able to you know they've always been able to do these things very easily and that was never me for me i, I think really what it is now is there's this doing drama, doing some of these really intense things is almost a form of expression and being able to get a part of me out that I've been too afraid to let out in the real world, if that makes sense. There's this element to it where it's almost like a, it's almost, are you there? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me blow this up. So I can see. There's almost this like, part of it where it's a it's a form of like therapy it's a form of being able to express these parts of myself that I never was able to or was too shy to or um repressed in myself you know and in that there's it's a lot of fun because it's not like I'm going through this being like I just released a trauma but it's much more in the sense of getting to play in lands and worlds that I never was able to or have been able to here you know so I think that's a part of why I've been drawn to drama a little more. Now, that said, I think there's also an element of, I've, I've found that I've been doing a little more comedies recently, kind of getting into that world, doing well in my auditions. And I think some of that comes to the realization, almost being able to just talk openly about some of this stuff has lent itself to this last element that I have, which is in my life, I, you know, I'm kind of like a jokester, prankster, thing but I think that's kind of the last element that I'm able to show because you have to come from a place of such authenticity and groundedness and and just being willing to risk and, and show yourself to be able to get to a place where you could just be yourself you know so I, th I think it's something that I'm actually venturing in towards more um and I definitely have fun doing it so and we'll get to see the lighter side of you then soon <laughs> exactly, exactly. You touched on it a bit. You were uh, a wonderful part of The Walking Dead. What does it mean to you to be a part of this iconic series? You know that that was a um, that was a pretty special moment for me. I had when I first started training as as an actor, we we had these lists that we made of sh dream shows that we wanted to be on, right? And the number well, the number one show was Deadwood, but Deadwood was no longer on anymore. Um, but the, the main show that I had that was still running was um, Walking Dead. And this was, this was maybe 10 years ago, you know, when the series first came out, maybe it was on season, end of season one or two. And actually, I, th I think it may have been three or four at that time. But when I finally, when I got the call that I got that, it was like, man, this is, this is one of those like marks off your list that's like, kind of a dream come true, you know? So it was, uh, it was pretty special. What are the other projects then that you've been busy working on lately? Um, so I was able to, um, you know, it hasn't been announced yet, but I say I worked on a, an A24 project this last week, which was another big, like, huge kind of thing. I got to meet a director that I absolutely have have loved the stuff that he's been doing um that was amazing i i have a movie that i'm gonna be shooting in a couple weeks that's so much fun um it's a project that uh kira o'donnell's gonna be working on 
And so it's, it's uh, that one, I'm very excited about that one. Um, I'm gonna be in Minneapolis for maybe two weeks shooting that, um, which is kind of why I'm growing all this stuff out. <laughs> So it's that's cool. I have a I have another project called Immortality um, that I worked on all summer last year, which is um, it's kind of a, a merging of the video game world, with the film world, uh, and it's really really interesting. Um, like from Sam Barlow, who who did her story, and um, oh, I can't remember the name of the other. But there were such cool, interesting games. It's almost like a puzzle of having to figure out and use these video clips to figure out what happened and figure out a mystery. Um, and I got to uh, I got to test it. It's at Tribeca right now, actually. Cool. And um, yeah, they they announced that they're going to be, I think, collaborating with um, Netflix too. So it's I think there's some big stuff in the works with it. I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited. I I was going to be going this weekend to go to the you know, Tribeca Festival to see the announcement with itself. So. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that now. Yeah, so that's, that's I'm really scary. excited about that. That that was a really <laughs> cool project. Um, yeah. And then I just did, I just shot an episode of American Gigolo. I was just going to bring that up. Yeah, <laughs> that's which, an iconic um, movie turned <laughs> series now, too. Oh, that was that was so much fun. Um, and it just and so many of these projects, it's like I get to meet these these people, like Rosie O'Donnell, and that was just so amazing. Um, I've been so lucky to to have worked with some of these big names, and everybody has been so kind of welcoming and nice. And I'm I'm not one of those one people who kind of go to the set and and try and talk to everybody. I kind of I kind of watch and and learn from seeing, and then and then eventually they'll come up and they'll talk to me and. and <laughs> a little relationship but it's always it's still i still feel like a little kid there man. i still feel like this is unbelievable you're making movies man you're making tv shows <laughs> I, I was talking about it with somebody yesterday on set it's just very surreal must be it is yeah it really is well what would you like to say then to everyone who are fans and supporters of the wonderful work that you do with your acting you know, I, what I'd love to say is, and I don't even think this is, is just an acting thing. This is this is pretty much for everything. Is is acting has given me this opportunity to face my fears on a day in and day out basis. You know, the amount of rejection kind of you deal with, and you're you're continually having to look in and and deal with that embrace that and then and then put yourself out there again and i think this goes for everyone that it's it's a process that if there's something you're afraid of like lean into it lean into it understand it and usually when you when you're able to do that you grow so much you learn from the mistakes and you're able to to take it as a lesson that really carries into your life carries into your friendships, carries into your work, your professionalism with everything you do. So um, yeah, the mentality of kind of leaning into your fears and, and trying to learn from them, make friends with them, really. Good advice. <laughs> <laughs> Feel the fear and do it anyway, right? Yeah, totally. And a lot of times it's, that's where the magic comes from. That's where those things, if you're, a lot of times, if you're afraid of something, there's a reason for it, you know? And that reason tends to be that there's something in there that you, you're really interested in. There's something in there that's meaningful to you. Um, and so it's a lot of, I, I find it is like, that's the secret sauce. That's the thing that will cause something else to grow and something else to happen. So. Good advice. 